Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ed Chatterton, and I'm here with a company called Carist. And what we do is we get today's IOE data from yesterday's devices. Um, we're not going to show you a lot of pictures of our software because it's really hard to show you what our software is because it resides in devices and in software. We're sort of under the hood. What we do is we take information from where it's produced and transport it to where it's needed over both new lines and all of the existing lines. Um, we're here both as a member of the Cisco Entrepreneur Residence Program and also as part of San Diego's Evo Nexus Incubator. We provide a software platform called Stitch that stitches together existing pieces of software and systems across both IP and non-IP, both legacy and new equipment. It's a second generation software platform. I've already deployed across all of the Predator drones that fly in US airspace. If you go over the two different satellite networks or other communication networks on the ground, we were able to do that with no modification to any of the existing systems, no modification to the software. Uh, also in banking security across North and South America, working with the existing devices, again, versus ripping out and replacing what's already there. Also in a power grid, um, allowing uh, the original power generators to work with the brand new ones in Western Australia. And last but not least, if you've taken a cruise recently, there's a 70% chance that if you've used the internet or made a phone call, it's going through my software. The company was founded in 2014. We have an experienced team, which I'll touch on in a moment, and we are revenue generating. I want to tell you a little bit about what we do. Think about Amazon. You go to Amazon and you buy a lot of stuff from them. You don't need to worry about how it's getting shipped to you. Before Amazon, you need to know exactly how you're going to get what you were looking for. Amazon said, says, do you want it there fastest? Do you want it there most securely? Do you want it there cheapest? You could choose what the best transport happens to be. And we do the same thing for networks. There's a lot of different existing lines. Most things go over the internet today, but there's a lot of ways to get data besides just the internet. There's a lot of ways that we've already built. We allow you to choose what network you want to go over, whatever best suits your needs for the particular situation. We work in the Internet of Things, but that's a really big area, the Internet of Everything. As you've heard on the panels or from all the other uh, presentations today, it's all about the analytics. We focus on three areas, communications interoperability, energy management, and facilities automation, simply because they have the single largest amounts of people buying from them. And oh, by the way, 80% of the existing devices and networks, already networked devices, are non-IP. 80% of what they use, we've already built. We've already put the lines to it. We can already talk to it, but we can't listen to it on the internet. What we do is we bridge that. We allow you to take the data from yesterday's devices and use them with today's needs. Everyone talks about the internet of things. We're building the internet of new things. We help you talk to the internet of the already there things. This is a Cisco slide. It's one of my favorite ones. Um, this is the first work that Chris did with Cisco. Um, we're doing demonstrations of some of this next week if anyone is interested. But this was um, a Customs and Border Patrol down in Southern Texas. And Cisco has an amazing offering for connected law enforcement. But they hit a bit of a snag because they wanted, pardon me, the customer wanted to work with everything that was already there. Cisco said, look, there's all this brand new shiny stuff. Look at the shiny stuff. And the customer said, but what about all the other stuff I've already bought? How do I talk to that? And that's what we did. You can see us there pulling the information from the existing and legacy devices and systems, sending it to the new software and the new analytics, and delivering it back to the, again, existing systems and devices. We just do the transport. Um, what we've demonstrated is how to uh, go over one of the legacy networks, which I'm about to touch on next. Um, I've already gone over what's connected and what's not. It's a big problem. Um, when we talk about the Internet of Things, again, we think of the consumer Internet, but the industrial Internet has a lot of devices out there. We've been instrumenting the planet for the last half a century. There's a lot of networks out there. That's why the power stays on. That's why the water comes out of your tap. They're not IP networks. They're other networks, and we can tie them to the IP networks. We do it faster. I want to go over a use case here called FirstNet. FirstNet has a couple of issues, but let's talk about what it is first. It's the network for all of the first responders in this country, where everybody has their individual little units, their individual little networks. Everyone's trying to work together, but they're all separate. The government has allocated a $7 billion budget to solve this problem. But let's talk about the budget. The solution that the government's looking at right now is going to cost $16 billion for the handsets alone. It's a $7 billion budget. We have a bit of a problem there. 
On top of that, it's taken 40 years to build the LMR network. That's what the first responders are currently using. 40 years to build the current network. And those go 30 mile radius towers. We're gonna replace them with three mile radius towers. How long is that gonna take to build? And talk about sustainment. Verizon has one of the largest networks on the planet, and it's still only a tiny fraction of what FirstNet's supposed to be. It's only centered in the cities and on the highways, and it costs them $30 billion a year to manage their network. There's a $7 billion budget for this entire effort. How are we gonna do it? We do have some ideas. Working with Cisco or Cisco partners, we can reduce the cost of handsets from $8,000 down to $1,000 by leveraging the existing network. It makes it financially feasible. On the build out, we'll run over the existing network. We're going to go over some of those towers that are already put up. It's not gonna be as good as FirstNet. FirstNet will be better. But this provides a transition path to get some of the FirstNet capabilities here today. And that's the reason why people like Verizon are interested. Because it's difficult for Verizon to convince somebody, pay $30 when you're used to paying $0 a month, if Verizon is to build this network, for instance. But maybe if we can get them to pay $3 to use a limited FirstNet, that's a way for Verizon to get into this market and go after it. And again, for Cisco or Cisco partners to sell a lot of handsets. And in terms of sustainment, maybe we should crawl before we run. Verizon spends a lot of money managing the most complicated network. This is the first time we're tying all these guys together. Why don't we give them something they're already comfortable with, something where they can learn how to actually manage the network. And that's what we do. We gather the information from wherever it is, in whatever form it is. We don't tell you it's ugly. We don't tell you it's not good enough. We say, hey, you've got a network, you've got information, we will grab it for you and we'll deliver it to your data center so you can do something with it. I wanna take the time to thank Tom and Mala for giving us the opportunity, for showing us where this great technology could be applied by giving us the numbers, by telling us what the problems the users had was. And I'd like to thank Rory and the Admiral, Admiral Davis, for showing us the team, for introducing us to the people we needed. As my final thought, I'd like to announce that um, thanks to Rory's introduction, the former 10-year CFO of Viasat, a, ten, or a billion dollar uh, satellite communications company in both defense and commercial, has agreed to join our management team. Thank you.